Welcome to the next unit in watershed hydrology. We are going to focus on how water gets to streams in this section of the course. Uh, this is still within chapter five of your textbook. Uh, fundamentally, we're going to break that down into three questions. How does water get to streams? How does the way it gets to streams, which we call the stream flow generation mechanisms, affect the hydrograph or how quickly the stream rises and falls in response to precipitation. And then finally, how do watershed characteristics affect the stream flow generation mechanisms? So that ultimately, what we'd love to be able to do is take a watershed, like the schematic one in the picture, which maybe is something like the picture in the background, uh, be able to know something about it. And if you look at these sort of list of characteristics here, these are the ones we've been talking about uh, all semester long, the sorts of things that we might be able to get from GIS data or stream stats or other things we know about the watershed, and be able to understand how those characteristics influence the way water moves to the stream, and ultimately do something like predict the hydrographs of the stream as a function of the watershed characteristics. So before we do that, we need to define some basic terms uh, that you'll be hearing for the rest of the course. Uh, the first is base flow. So this is the low flow in a stream when it's not raining. Um, so I'm going to add some blue boxes to this example hydrograph here. So these blue box periods are the base flow periods. So times when it is not raining, when the stream isn't rising, and when it isn't falling very quickly. In between the blue boxes are storm flow periods. So these are times when water is entering the stream as a result of precipitation that's occurring or that has recently occurred. And as a hint, we're going to have different stream flow generation mechanisms operating or different importance of them during storm flow periods versus base flow periods. Uh, just a semantic note, a terminology note, I really prefer the term stream flow generation because it incorporates both base flow and storm flow periods into it. So stream flow is base flow plus storm flow. And because we are thinking about both those base flow periods and storm flow periods, we are thinking about flow paths that occur both on the land surface and those that occur in the subsurface. So that infiltration business that we've just been talking about, what happens to the water after that? You will see a lot in some of the resources that I'm linking and in some other videos, the term runoff generation mechanisms. Um, I don't like this term quite as much because runoff is not a clearly defined term. And sometimes when people are talking about runoff, they're only talking about flow paths that are happening on the surface. Well, so if we're only talking about surface flow, those are generation mechanisms that won't occur during base flow periods and will exclude some really important things. So it's not always clear to me what people are talking about when they say runoff generation mechanisms, which is why... I use stream flow generation mechanisms instead. On the other hand, the word runoff and runoff generation mechanisms includes flow that gets to lakes and wetlands instead of streams or before it gets to streams, whereas my preferred term stream flow generation mechanisms ignores that. So six of one, half dozen of the other, but just know that more or less stream flow generation mechanisms and runoff generation mechanisms are really referring to the same set of processes. Just below this video, you will find uh, another video that really kind of breaks down all of the different ways that water can get to streams, these runoff generation or stream flow generation mechanisms. So I encourage you to watch that first. Below that is a link to a web page, or rather a whole series of web pages that take you through these uh, flow generation mechanisms and uh, the watershed characteristics that control them. So that's sort of a good supplement to your text for this session of the course. And then what you'll see in that video and in that web page is that there are really four important processes to move water from the watershed into the stream. 
infiltration excess overland flow, saturation overland flow, subsurface storm flow, and groundwater flow. So I'm going to make a series of short videos that will take you through each of those processes or link you to some other resources for each of those processes. So that ultimately, again, the goal is that we know something about the watershed and are able to predict stream flow from the landscape characteristics. But I'll tell you the short answer right now, it's complicated. So we're never going to be able to um, have a one for one relationship between things you can read off a map and knowing exactly how a stream will respond. Uh, you need some pretty complex uh, hydrologic models to be able to do even a reasonably good job of simulating uh, stream flow from watershed characteristics. Instead, where we'll get to in this class is to be able to talk in broad generality. So there's a lot of words on the slide. Don't worry about it right now. We'll come back to it. Um, but we're really trying to get at sort of the the broad process dominance, you know, topography, soils, climate, vegetation, and how that's going to interact with these stream flow generation mechanisms and ultimately the hydrograph. So read chapter five in your book, watch the videos and blog posts in the order that are linked below, and then prepare for a quiz that you'll take by next Monday. Just like the last one, you will get two chances at it. So if you're not happy with the, your score the first time, you'll be able to go back in and take it a second time. All right, reach out to me if you have any questions. I'll be rolling the content out as quickly as I can, but if you get to the end of what's here right now, you may want to check back again in another day or two and see if I've got some more videos up for you. Thanks for listening.